Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On today's episode, we are going to work on the plumbing for the cooling system to put the Subaru EZ30 into my 69 911S Blasphemy build. So this is one of those episodes I'm really looking forward to because I have to solve some problems and fabricate some stuff and I've had, you know, an idea milling around in my head for months and so today's the day I get to actually see if it's going to work. Uh, what I've done is in this particular car, the entire tunnel area has been really cored out by the previous race car owner. So I think that I can fit two hard lines, two aluminum one and one quarter inch pipes right into the middle of the tunnel to use for coolant lines. So I'll be able to connect the engine to those lines, run them up front to the areas where the front radiators will be, and then back, and it'll be super clean and super efficient. Now, first things first, I've picked up two 10 foot long, inch and a quarter aluminum conduit pipes. This is what they would use typically to run uh, electrical through in a, in a build, but they're perfect for my needs, which is to have a hard line to run radiator fluid through in my car. They were, I think, $27 each. Uh, at my local electrical supply place. So if you're doing something like this, you can do that as well. Now I've seen people do uh, hard lines like they do oil lines in vintage 911s. I just didn't like how it looked. Um, I've seen them do it on each side. So they'll have one on the right side, one on the left side, and they're visible. You know, you sort of see them in the wheel well and you see them run up and down. I didn't want to do that. I, I just don't think that looks very clean. And one thing I'm pretty grateful for is that, you know, this chassis has been hacked up so much that I actually have room to go through the center, I hope. So what you can see here is that there's an area up front that just barely accommodates these two pipes. I've used my calipers to measure. As an aside, one thing I'm really grateful for is the fact that I can fit two 10-foot pipes inside my car for transport. That's why I think the Panamera is the coolest 170 mile an hour pickup truck you can buy. Anyway, to do what I have to do today, um, I've got to pull the engine transmission back out, get them out of the way so I have access to the tunnel. And then there's actually two pipes that are used as um, guide pipes for, I think, the e-brake assembly. I'm actually going to have to go into the inside of the car, clean everything out of the inside, which I have to do anyway. It's way overdue. And I'm going to have to cut an access so I can cut these uh, pipes out. So I have just a clear path from the back to the front. Then I'm gonna make a back plate that fits inside the hole of the rear tunnel that these pipes will go through. And then I'll figure something out for the front. But the goal for the end of this video is to have these pipes running from back to front. And I don't think I'm gonna permanently weld in this back plate that I'm gonna create because I have to do uh, cables for the transmission. I've gotta do brake. Uh, lines. I've got to do hydraulic clutch line. I've got to do fuel, um, some pipe for the fuel. So I don't, I haven't solved all that stuff yet. So I'm going to probably just put a couple of tacks, maybe three or four, just to get it in there. Then I'll stop and figure out what kind of tubing I'm going to need for all of the rest of that stuff. By the way, a couple quick things. Uh, number one, the wrench store is open. This hat, which is cool. Uh, this is a snapback. It's vented. It's nice. It works in the summer. There's black and orange, and then there's uh, camo and orange. If you guys want to check it out, it's at wrench.com slash store. And then also, you guys have been so killer about this, but comments and likes and subs are so huge uh, for this channel. So if you guys want to comment and just like give me throw a set of horns or just, you know, give me a rah-rah or whatever you want to do, that's super cool of all of you to do. And I really, really appreciate it. First things first, I've got to get the engine and transmission out. All right, so I'm under the car now uh, into this cavity, which would normally be a, a pretty sealed tunnel but you can see in this particular car everything's been cut out so i mean that's like the, we're in the interior of the car this way certainly i'll be patching that at some point but until then let's talk about this so this tunnel goes all the way up and it's hard to tell there but there's three little dots on the front end and 
that is clear sailing all the way to the front of the car. The problem is, are these two welded in tubes? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the stuff out of the interior of the car. I'm gonna actually cut where those tubes are. I'm gonna cut them here and cut them here and basically cut them out and then re-weld up top. Um, once I cut them out, I'm gonna do a little fit, a little test fit and see if my two pipes can fit all the way forward. I've also got to cut the front uh, cover plate out. So uh, for now, let's empty out the interior. We'll get this stuff all cut out. So this is cool. This is the first time I've had the interior completely out of this car. Uh, one thing I wanna show you guys really quick before I move on is look how perfect these gauges are. I'm actually gonna put these gauges in my other car. They're, they're absolutely restored and lovely. And since this thing is getting a fully digital dash, I can uh, completely take it out. Um, so check this out. I, I, this is a big win. Um, these are the two tubes right here. Let's see if this will focus. These guys right here are the tubes that I need to take out and check it out. There's just a bracket that holds up both of them. I was really worried that I was going to have to cut the tunnel and cut these things out, but uh, I don't have to. I just got to cut this bracket underneath and then cut them from the outside and we should be good to go. So good news and bad news. Um, I was able to get these things separated really easily, but turns out this was the, the line that I was able to cut from the inside. These are still firmly attached. So I'm hoping I can just kind of uh, move them back and forth and let the metal uh, fatigue. The problem is there's enough bracketry in there. It's hard to show you guys. There's enough bracketry in there that I may not be able to clear the holes for these pipes. So we are butted right up against that front of the tunnel. You can see this thing running down on each side and how they go through. I will obviously trim these about here. Now it's time for a jump in the ocean because it's 100 degrees. But uh, good progress so far. There's a couple things in there that are holding it up, but uh, next thing I'm gonna do is cut out that front piece and see if I can get these tubes to to uh, fully penetrate all the way through. Okay, so it's the next day. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Um, now that I have proof of concept and I can actually fit these tubes inside the tunnel, I got a couple things to do. The first thing I have to do is get access to the front side and I've been thinking about how to do that. I'm gonna grind the paint off first just so I can see what's there, but I think I'm going to actually, if I can fit a tool under there and I can make a square panel with the holes cut out for the tubes, that's easier than taking the oval shape that's already there and making it bigger and then trying to make a panel from within there, I think. The, the, the big kicker here is whether I have the space to fit a tool in, what I would love to not have to do is remove the entire front suspension, um, if I can help it. I'm gonna get in there and grind it off now and then just sort of see what I've got to work with.
Okay, now I got pretty clear sailing. I've got a couple things in there, including what looks to be the linkage for the accelerator pedal, which I'm actually not gonna need because this is gonna be drive by wire. So I may need to eliminate that and have a little bit more room up in this cabin. But check out what I just discovered. I just realized that this plate is bolted on in here. So I'm actually gonna pull that off and see what it looks like underneath and see uh, what my access is like. So here is a real engineering challenge. The brake dual master cylinder situation that has been set up for this car is just right in the way of the tunnel. You see that big vertical right there? And I don't know what to do about it yet. I'm gonna have to figure this out. That's where it would typically go, right? It would go right through here. So I was confused initially, and this actually ends up having a really great silver lining. Um, so this is the dual master cylinder brake on this pedal. For some reason, I was thinking this was the brake pedal. This is actually the clutch. I was wondering what this was, but this is actually a hydraulic clutch, which means theoretically, I can just connect this top right to my G96 transmission with a hydraulic line, and I'm good to go which is a major engineering problem solved. The problem now is that this thing's in the way. So what I'm thinking I might do, instead of trying to mount the hydraulic clutch to the bottom here and then have this piece in between, I might see if I can make a bracket that'll mount on the car and then again, leave this whole area free for my piping. So this is gonna be a little more complicated I was thinking I'd just bang this video out and have the tubes through today, but I think I'm gonna have to do a little bit of engineering to make this work, uh, but that's even more fun, isn't it? After a bit of a break, a bit of a lunch, and a conversation with someone far more experienced than I, uh, which is Dave from TRE, we've determined that yes, there is actually a hydraulic uh, clutch cylinder in there, which is awesome. It means it solves a pretty major engineering issue for me in the near future. However, it's on the wrong side. So the Porsches in the 80s that had the G50 transmission actually had that same cylinder, but it was on um, it was on the other side. It was actually right by the clutch pedal. So I'm gonna take the entire pedal assembly out for now, or at least move it out of the way so that I can continue on with the routing of this piping uh, and see if I can make my brackets for it. One thing I gotta handle is I have a big dent in the floor, which happens to be right here, so I can get to it, which is great, but I'm gonna knock that thing down, and then I should have enough room. We've got some success here. We got both pipes coming out of the front. I'm gonna make a square plate. I'm gonna cut two holes in it. I'm gonna hang these things out, eventually get 90 degree bends welded on these because we're really close to the steering rack right here. Okay, so the piece I need is basically two inches by four inches. I'm gonna try to make it out of this, which is 18 gauge. Um, I think it's stiff enough. We're gonna just see how it goes. Uh, it's not gonna be that hard to cut a square out and cut two holes in it, so. I'm not super worried about it. Um, I also have some really thick stuff that's like, actually maybe that's 18 gauge, maybe this is 20 gauge. Uh, that might be 16 gauge. So some stuff that I was gonna use for um, motor mounts, but, but uh, for now, I'm gonna try this. Basically cut a square, two by four, cut two holes, and um, see how it fits up.
Okay, dudes, here we are under the car and I got my bracket. Looks really good. Fits over perfectly, fits into the spot really well. Um, I don't have grommets yet for these, but that's gonna be a kind of a logical next step. I don't even need to tack it in at the moment. It's gonna be fine where it is. So let's look at the back. Okay, now that everything is out, I just need to make a plate that'll go here. I'll probably use the slightly thicker stuff that I have because this kind of feels more structural since it's going across. I'll be modifying this. I'm gonna actually do a little bit of hammer and dolly work here. This thing's all bent up and this lip is all trash. So I'm gonna get that thing together, kind of make a shape to fit this piece into, grind it out a little bit. filthy and my garage is totally trashed, but I have a really cool bracket up front. I have a really cool bracket in the rear. I'm not gonna weld them in just yet because I've gotta run brake lines, I've gotta run shifter uh, cables, I've gotta run shifter hydraulic, I've gotta run a whole bunch of stuff. So I wanna keep that back plate intact. Then in the front, I'm gonna have some 90 degree bends welded on uh, so I can fit you know, regular radiator hoses and still avoid the uh, front steering rack. So that is gonna do it for this video. I've got a ton of cleaning up to do, not only of the garage, but of myself. Uh, that was a really fun project. I really enjoyed today. And again, as always, thank you guys for watching and being part of this. It's really fun to do this engineering. Uh, I've never done anything like this before. And uh, I appreciate you guys being along uh, for the ride with me. All right, I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.